question here about whether I connect my content plan to upcoming launches or existing products. And uh, my answer is no. And I'll tell you why. Because I feel that if I'm, well, first of all, you have to understand my overall philosophy about content is I see content as ministry. Content, the, the, the primary two purposes of content is exploring my experiences and ideas and philosophies and way of expression, experimenting and playing and exploring. So on one hand, it's for my own growth. And on the other hand, it's for humanity, service to humanity, whoever happens to catch it, if they are blessed by it, if they find some benefit, may they continue on. And whether they ever, ever buy from me, this is important because if, and obviously a third purpose of content, which I try to stay light, light on is sure. Some people who watch my videos or read my blog posts or whatever may one day buy from me. But I notice for me, at least if I hold that third purpose too tightly, I tend to become, uh, you know, less genuine in, in exploring my thoughts and in being of service to someone who may never buy from me. And let's be clear that the more successful your content is, successful in market terms, meaning the more it goes viral and this video was shared by, you know, watched by 10,000 people or this blog post was shared 50 times, right? The more successful your content is, the lower the conversion rate on that content. Because if a video is seen by 100,000 people or 10,000 people, do you expect those 10,000 people to become your clients? No, of course not, right? If a video is seen by 100 people, maybe three out of those 100 will eventually, or maybe 10, maybe 20 of the, out of those 100 may eventually become your clients. That makes sense. Seen by 10,000 people, you don't expect the same ratio. It's not going to be 200, 300 people or what? What is the <laughs> percentage? Do you see what I mean? So, so this is why having clarity about the purpose of content liberates me to create authentic content because now I know I'm doing it for my growth and for your growth, whether or not a single dime is ever exchanged or you ever become my client or even you, you ever tell me if, whether or not you even like, click like, doesn't matter, okay? please click like, subscribe, and comment below. You notice I don't say that because, again, that's attaching it. You know, there's, a, there's an attachment there. So um, back to the question. Usually when you hear of content marketing training, it's like, well, what's your upcoming launch? All right. And then that's the, the, the previous month or two, you really should be creating content, you know, educating people about the context of the, why this product is going to be so great and um, you know, sharing how great you are about the, the area of expertise. And I say, no, because again, I'm too attached and it's not going to come across as impactfully for my growth and for yours. So um, now you might say, well, isn't there some kind of overall plan? Yes, there is. Um, the three stages of content, you know, look, look it up, uh, three stages of content creation. If my article doesn't come up, you can Google it. Three stages of content creation, George Cowan, my article will come up. The product is the third stage, whereas the exploration is the first stage. The second stage is the repurposing of good content from the first stage. You can read all about that. But so in other words, we don't create product separately from content. I know some of you do, and sometimes you're inspired to create a new product or service based on nothing you've created content on, okay? It's okay. It's, you could do whatever you want, experiment. I, I'm all about that. But of course, you don't have the benefit of the fact that you built trust in your audience and in yourself, grounded trust and confidence in the topic of that product or that service. You don't. So this is why the three stages of content makes so much sense because you're exploring, experimenting, and stage one, different, a variety of topics, many different things that, that interest you, right? You could be as... Um, you know, diverse in those as possible in stage one. And then stage two, you look at what touched the market, what impacted your audience. And you take the most impactful, engaging things and you bring it into stage two and go, all right, let me make this even better. Uh, edit the article or let me turn the article into a video or video into an article. And let me reshare it even more broadly 
for example, using Facebook ads, Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, et cetera. Let me just distribute that good stuff even more. Okay. Now, stage three is let me take the stage two stuff and let me turn it into a product. I mean, maybe integrate some pieces from stage two into. So, therefore, this whole flow is great because over time, you have been educating your audience on the topic that you're now creating a product or service or subscription or what members, whatever to, right? So I think in, in other words, um, why do people believe you? Why do people trust you about your life coaching or about your leadership advice or about your healing or why do people trust you? Because over time you have built up your own self-trust in showing up regularly with content, exploring all these different things and then noticing, oh, they really like it when I talk about healing in this way. Interesting. That's why you have to study the data. Interesting. Let me go and take that idea because that, that did well. Let me say more about that. Let me create two or three or four more pieces of content around that in service to humanity and also in service to my own explorations about that way of thinking about healing or that way of looking at leadership. Or... So then by the time you create a product around it, it's very natural flow. Like, oh, okay, great. Uh, you know, I, I hope at least once a quarter, you're creating some kind of offer. Once a quarter is, is not too often, right? Once a quarter, you go look at your stage two stuff, you integrate that and go, all right, I know what my next offer is. I know what my next coaching frame is, how I'm gonna sell my service now because based on all the stage two stuff, this is why it's so important, I think, to create content consistently because every single time you could, I heard one time from um, uh, Tim Sanders, I was deeply influenced by his book, Love is the Killer App back in, uh, I think, 2000 or 99, when I, I know, long, 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 long time ago, Love is the Killer App uh, by Tim Sanders. And um, he said, I, I think this is one of his blog posts. He said, having a blog is like having a focus group consistently. <laughs> it's like, it's brilliant. Because he, he's like a marketing guy as well. He's like, yeah, it's like, in other words, translation, having content out there on a consistent basis is continually understanding your market better and better because you notice what's coming through. Like, oh, this is, they, they really found your way of being in this way really impactful versus that way they didn't find as impactful. So therefore, back to the original question, should you create content for an upcoming offer? You, you can if you want to. I know a lot of people that's a product launch formula, very traditional way of launching online products. But to me, it just doesn't have the genuine feel and the genuine sense of childlike exploration that the three stages of content has. So I hope this helps. Like I said, you can always break the rules, even my rules. I like Rebel. So uh, experiment with what feels right to you in, in the relationship between your content and your offers and, and, and go with what works for you and for your audience, right?